Hello and welcome to Next Stop News. We've been away for a month, so we have a lot to cover. Here's what we'll be discussing in this month's installment. First off, the R211 pilot has finally arrived to New York City! It's not a myth after all. Everything's been leading up to this moment. R211's 4064 and 4063 were the first two cars to touch base on New York City tracks between June 28th and June 29th, being wrapped in gigantic tarps during the delivery phase. The rest of the train was delivered in late June and July from Nebraska. Though the pilot train is now here, it will be quite a long while before it sees service. Can't wait to see it testing though. Credit to the Forefoot, DJ Hammers, and many others for the footage. Various sets of R32s and R42s have been moving around lately. The R32 at Canarsie Yard was replaced with an R42. Many of the R32s have also returned to 207th Street Yard. Some say that they are preparing for scrap, while others speculate an unlikely return to service. Only time will tell. The M3s are also beginning to be scrapped, one notable set being 9779 to 9780 on June 22nd, as the 9100 series M9s continue to flow in. It was reported that the very last M9, 9202, has been built, but no imagery has been released yet. 2002 MCI D4500 2926, which briefly returned to service from May 6th to May 13th, was taken off of TTMG's roster on May 29th, officially ending the 2002 D4500 era for Eastchester Depot. I also hear that it has a broken axle, so it's definitely done for. I also hear that it will possibly become part of the museum fleet. This news comes off of the heels of Eastchester Depot resuming their Prevost delivery, receiving 1385 to 1395 and 1397. They now have 15 Prevosts in total, adding 12 Prevosts to their count. 2910 is officially the last 2002 D4500 left. The driver is super friendly too. He'll even give you code breaks and free rides. Meredith Depot now has up to 1579, 23 Prevosts total. As a result, they're shifting 2015 to 16 Prevost to Castleton and Charleston. Castleton now has 10 MCI D4500 CTs left out of 21, and Charleston has 23 MCI D4500 CLs left out of 29. As the order progresses for Meredith Depot, the 2007 D4500 CLs will continue to be retired, while the 2008 D4500 CTs will either be retired or shifted to Spring Creek. Yep, that's right. On June 24th, it was revealed that some CTs might be getting retired after all, as they were very unreliable on Staten Island. While on June 25th, 2218 was spotted on the BM4 without tractors. Credit to a user named Jaden for the pick. I also wonder if 2247 and 2248 will be heading back to Spring Creek, as Eastchester has been using the new Prevost to push out older D4500 CLs to Yonkers. Besides this, 2021 Prevost 1438 arrived at Far Rockaway on June 21st. This is the very first 1400 delivered to us. The timing of this delivery was expected since Far Rockaway was next to receive the Prevost after Eastchester, but it still caught me off guard nonetheless. The bus hit service on the QM16 on Wednesday, June 30th without any trackers. I'm just glad that Volvo is going strong with their Prevost deliveries after a one month delay from May to June. By the way, after Far Rockaway, Yonkers is next. Let's talk about the hybrid buses, with 9624 to 9625 having transferred to Tuskegee on May 11th after four successful weeks at Manhattanville, 9620 being assigned to the depot on May 20th, and the 9630s hitting service on May 21st, the M31's fleet is now one-third LFS HEV. Yep, not a single next-gen has permanently left the depot yet, only as loans to Quill and Manhattanville. They basically have boomerang next-gens. I'm also loving those 9700s at Manhattanville, especially 9712 without license plates serving well on the M5 and M11, a sight that I'm well pleased to see. I'm also pleased to see that someone already made a scale model of the LFS HEV, which looks incredibly realistic. Yet the Nova LFS HEVs were gradually taken out of service between mid-May and mid-June. Kingsbridge was the first depot to have mechanical issues with their 9 LFS hybrids as they weren't in service between May 18th and June 21st. 9648 broke down on May 18th on the M100. Tuskegee pulled their LFS hybrids on June 13th and began running them again on June 16th. Manhattanville pulled theirs out of service for a few hours as well on June 15th. 9667 M116 was the last to run before they re-entered service on the same day. 
It was revealed that the new hybrids were experiencing door issues, teething issues, parking brake problems, signage problems, interior display issues, and malfunctioning trackers. Days before the malfunctions and defects were revealed, I was on 9698 on the M4 on June 3rd, which turned off while in service in Washington Heights. The bus driver had to start it back up at the light. That is not normal. Only certain engine functions are supposed to shut off at a red light, not the entire bus. It was also known that 9624 had screen issues as early as May 4th, his first day of service. Credit to Transit Sylveon who told me for the imagery. And a similar incident of an ATV shutting off occurred with 9676 on May 14th. The good news is that these issues have now been fixed, and Tuskegee, Kingsbridge, and Manhattanville are now all running their new hybrids very well. The Nova ATV order was also delayed, though all Nova ATVs in the base order and some in the option order have been built according to CPTDB, there were still no new deliveries between May 18th and June 23rd. 9702 was the last to be delivered to Manhattanville for a month, which transferred to Quill on June 17th for some strange reason, before transferring back to Manhattanville. The first bus to be delivered after the delay was 9657 to Kingsbridge Depot. Because of the delay, the LFS hybrids were not able to overtake the old gens at Manhattanville until July, as there were 19 old gens and 13 LFS hybrids active at the depot until June 23rd. The reactivation of 9702 as well as the arrival of 9678, 9700, 9711, 13, 15, 17 through 21, 23 through 24, 39, 40, 45, 50, 52, 73, and many others in late June and July created a turning of ties in favor of the ATVs and the full diminishing of the old gen count at the depot. Five transferred next gens from other depots throughout the city also helped this process. Though deliveries have resumed at an accelerated pace, the completion of the base order delivery has been pushed back to September, with the option order to finish being delivered anywhere between October and December. Meanwhile, the Conehead LFS order is still slated to be completed by February to March 2022, but is expected to begin around November instead of September. 79 diesel buses are expected to arrive in the fourth quarter of 2021, which is between October and December. Some speculate that this is specifically Casey Stingles' batch. Many are also turning to the XDE40s for renewed hope. 9563 arrived at the JFK vendor on June 1st. 9565 arrived at the vendor on June 10th. 9566 arrived on the 11th. And 9564 was delivered to Mother Claire Hale Depot on June 18th. The base order is expected to be completed by October, one month sooner than previously expected, and the option order is expected to be finished by January of next year. The order was previously subject to door malfunctions. 2021 New Flyer XD40 7851 was built as of May 17th and arrived at the JFK vendor on June 18th. With the spec changes of the XDE 40s, as of July 2nd, 7852 to 7854 have also been built. Credit to transit fanner Shamari Kinsey for the photo of 7851 and 9565. The link to his channel will be in the description. I like his design a lot. Feels like what a 2018 XDE40 would look like if it were diesel and had the spec modifications of the 2021 XDE40. It's kooky, kinda like the LFS diesel cone heads. Brooklyn is slated to receive 138 more of these lookalikes to shift and retire many next gens from November to July 2022. Yes, I get it, the new designs are weird, but we have to get used to change. Concerning retired equipment, 4369, 4372, and 4424 are all retired. 27 next gens remain at Kingsbridge Depot. Manhattanville retired old gens like Wildfire in May. Last time we spoke, they had 31 old gens left. That number has since dwindled to 17. 6690, 6700, and 6726 became property of Quill. 6692, 98, 6704, 14, 16, and 27 became swing buses for East New York and Jackie Gleason, while 6696, 97, 99, 13, 18, and 22 were all retired, along with 6742 from Quill. Far Rockaway now has his very own fleet of old gens, 51 in total, no longer using buses in rotation with JFK Depot. As a result, JFK's old gen count fell from 127 to 76. West Farms Depot experienced a shortage throughout much of May and June. This forced them to resort to using loaned buses from other depots, such as 2010 LFSAs on the BX-19, 2009 next gens from Gun Hill, and 2015 LFSs from Kingsbridge on standard routes. 
They even ran some standard buses on articulated routes like the BX-36. Reminds me of the days when West Farms borrowed D60HFs and Orion 5s from Kingsbridge and Gun Hill. The BX-99, M-99, and B-99 routes were discontinued on June 10th due to the subway fully reopening 24-7. These routes faithfully served overnight essential workers for almost a year during the pandemic. Many falsely assumed that the leases on the XE-40s and Proterra Electrics would expire by the end of June because of a photo of XE-40-0011 being towed out of Michael Jayquil without any decals. However, it was revealed on the transit forums that the leases of both models had been extended a year, till December 2021, which basically means that once the elevators at 181st Street Station are fully replaced, the electric 40-footer demos will be out of here. They're still in the demo phase, which is why you see them all running every day. Best routes to catch them on at this present moment are the M50, B39, and B60. The overhead electric charger at Williamsburg Bridge Plaza is going to be replaced soon, which is definitely good news as it signals a potential upgrade to the technology. On May 25th, it was revealed that the MTA will be upping the ante on the electric bus order. Instead of 45 electrics for New York City Transit, that number is now 60. They will be split between Kingsbridge, Charleston, East New York, and Grand Avenue depots to retire the next gens at Queens Village by shifting some older LFSs there and expanding the fleet some more in Brooklyn. It may even retire some newer models in the next gens, but this is not confirmed yet. Can't wait for the MTA to go electric in the near future. If you haven't seen my video on these electrics, it will also be in the description below. The contract for these buses is believed to be awarded in December 2021. Sadly, it was announced on June 23rd that token booth clerks will remain unavailable to perform metro card transactions, instead being solely replaced by the vending machines. The Transit Museum Gallery Annex also reopened on the 23rd. Oh yeah, Sarah Feinberg also got a promotion, around the 8th or so. Flatbush's total number of wrapped XT40s is now 17 at 7624, 33, 35, 40, 41, 43, 46, and 47 were recently wrapped. Out of 44 units, 17 now bear the local scheme. Those units are listed below. Sadly, as you know, one of those wrapped units got into an accident on June 7th on the B49 when the driver ended up swerving into traffic and crashing, causing the bus to end up remaining lodged in a brownstone building until June 11th. Free COVID vaccine in MTA stations. In an effort to get Johnson & Johnson doses into arms before they expire, in a push to fight off the newly arisen Delta and Delta Plus variants of COVID, and in a struggle to get 70% of adults vaccinated before July 4th, the vaccine program at Penn Station, Grand Central, and other stations was extended to July 3rd, from its original termination date of May 15th. This program offered an unlimited Metro card to anyone who received a dose. Once again, major developments have occurred at Nice Bus. Due to the presence of the 2021 XN40s 1981 to 1999, NICE has retired 19 Orion 7 Next Gen CNGs between 1700 and 1796. Additionally, the future of NICE becomes clearer as each day goes by. The 2021 Gillig BRT Plus CNG 2000 was spotted at Mitchell Field Depot on May 29th alongside another Gillig, likely 2002, after having been there for almost a month and an image of 2000 when it was at the Gillick facility was released on May 31st. It is a complete game changer for Nassau County and an order which will seal the fate of all Orions at Nice. 2003 was spotted in Brooklyn and delivered to Mitchell Field Depot on June 25th. 2001 was delivered on June 29th bringing Mitchell Field's Gillick total to four. They should begin training soon and in order to meet the 80 bus quota by the end of the year at least 13 Gillicks will be delivered each month. As I said previously, if you want next-gen CNG photos, now is the time for you to get them. Also, if you haven't already, go watch the video in the description below where I talk more in detail about the Gillicks. New Jersey Transit retired all their remaining MCI DLW3 SSs between 7500 and 7503. Meadowlands lost all its D4000s due to the arrival of the 2021 D4500 CTs. Fairview is also receiving many transferred 2006 D4500 CLs to help retire their D4000s. Meanwhile, many 2008 D4500 CLs have been sent to retirement. New Jersey Transit also received a demo protair on May 25th as they prepare to initiate their electric pilot program on Newton Avenue Garage in the fall. I'm also introducing a new concept, fanning recommendations. 
This month's recommendations are Beeline Orion 5s, Orion 5 Suburbans, Manhattanville and Mother Clara Hale Old Gens, Tuskegee and Kingsbridge Next Gens, Meredith Prevost, Grand Avenue Next Gens, G4000s at the George Washington Bridge Bus Terminal, and MCIs on Staten Island. Credit to those who have provided some of the photos and information used in this video. Also credit to the people who I wasn't able to shout out during this video. Please subscribe, stay blessed, stay healthy, stay hype, and thank you for riding with Next Stop News.